Hey, this is Tim Pierce. Today we're gonna to look at some quick, reliable tools to break you through the mud, the muck, and the mire and get you inspired. It happens to me, it happens to all of us, and there's some quick ways through it. As always, click the link below for the online masterclass. There's a 14 day free trial, so you can check it out and see if it's right for you. There's another link below you should click. This Monday, we start the PRS Online Summer School. Lots of great teachers, myself, Tyler Larson, Paul Reed Smith, Dennis Chambers, every instrument, four days. It's gonna be really fun. Join us if you can. So when you get a tone, get it dry, that's fine. Make sure it's a tone that's reliable. Make sure that it's something that you know is good. If you have one good amp and one good guitar, use that. Don't be experimenting all the time. All of us find stuff that works for the rest of our lives. You might have one sound you remember from a year ago, oh yeah, it was great. That'll be great for the rest of your life. So it's fine to experiment and reach and reach and reach and try stuff, but you'll always feel like you're failing if you're constantly reaching and almost grabbing stuff. There are things you do and sounds you have made that are great. And rely on those for the rest of your life because they'll always be there. This is a sound that I know I can use forever. Sort of half distorted, the pedal's not all the way up, the amp's not all the way up, it's in the middle somewhere. It's a sound I trust, and a sound that's reliable for me. Now, is there a better sound out there? Maybe there is, but why reach for it all the time? You need to separate the reaching from the playing, the practicing from the playing, the researching from the playing, the, you know, the endless experimentation from what you know is good and you can use for the rest of their life. Both are valid. So find a zone where it's something that you can rely on that you've done before and use that and then reach a little later. You know, stay in that zone today. Now, the other thing is that sounds good dry, but don't be afraid to add reverb. So let me turn this on. It's always better when it's a little wet. Very satisfying. And in a track, that will disappear. Now, I was listening to my favorite Alice in Chains record the other day. Everything's bone dry. I get that. It's a great aesthetic. But it's also nice when you're actually kind of working stuff out and trying to enjoy the guitar to have some ambience on it. And I use delays a lot. They're off right now. But at least use some reverb, which you can get out of your workstation or out of a pedal. It's easy. So that's a sound that's reliable, I know works. I'll use it for the rest of my life. It's just the half distorted amp, the half distorted pedal, the sweet spot on anything. And this guitar is easy to play. It's not the most like vibey vintage guitar, far from it. Very easy to play, that's another key. Super light strings, 9 through 42, and a boutique guitar that plays itself. That's another thing to get you comfortable. You decide to fight with a vintage guitar? Go ahead, do that later though. Kind of give yourself a break, give yourself a vacation. And choose a guitar that's easy to play. Another thing I recommend is create a dream workstation, a fantasy workstation. I kind of did that here. I grew up next to an Air Force base. I've always been fascinated by planes. This is like an airplane cockpit. I can reach pretty much anything from right here. And it's challenging sometimes because I bump the guitars, I get a lot of dings, and it's really tight too. It's kind of hard to get in and out this little area right here, which you can't even see. But what it does is it creates momentum. So if I'm playing and I want to change sounds like that, if I want to do something on the computer, like that. 
want to manipulate something here or over here on a pedal or a rack piece of gear, it all happens really, really quickly because I can just reach for it and do it. If you're plugging in on your knees, a pedal, whatever, man, it can quickly put you in a bad mood, especially if it takes some extra time or something doesn't quite work right or you plug it in wrong. So the idea for me is to be able to create momentum by having, even my tuner is right there, right in front of me. I just look at it, there it is. Create a fantasy workstation. Make it like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. Anything you can do to make it inviting. And have your guitar right there, ready to go. So the other thing I always say is, I've always said my studio is really like starting a car. I'll say it's starting like, like starting a Ferrari just to play it up or whatever. But it's really like starting a car so that when I want to do something, there's just a few steps. I do have to open up Pro Tools on the computer. So if you're using a DAW, which I recommend because then you can capture your ideas, really play with stuff. You do have a few steps, but make those steps easy. And if you can, leave your station on for most of the day, or at least for the period of time when you might come and visit it. So when you come, you come sit and pick up the guitar, you can go right away. There's a lot to that. So if it's three or four steps, make those steps really easy. Turn on the power, turn on the computer, open the program, light it up. Your amp goes on automatically. I mean, I have, I have everything on power strip so that when I click one button, everything lights up. Got to have a really good power strip for that. And they're actually, some of them can't handle all that. But uh, if, you, if you can find ways to make it, you know, three or four steps rather than eight or 10 steps, it's always better. stand up for and champion and never be embarrassed about the kind of music you love the most. Whether it's simple or it's soft or it's hard, <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. There is a certain kind of music that I'm sure you love the most. If it's White Snake, then great, it's White Snake. If it's Tower of Power, that's great too. If it's Soundgarden, that's great. If it's early 60s, Glen Campbell, that's great too. 50s, whatever it is that you love, stay in that zone. You know, reach outside of it to learn stuff, but never be, I mean, what if it's Dire Straits? What if that's your favorite band? Try and be that guy and do that kind of sound and write those kinds of songs and play that kind of guitar. Because a lot of the greatest artists only do one thing and that's what makes them great. Keith Richards never tried to be Pat Metheny. He never even tried to be Eric Clapton. He was Keith Richards. It's the same for any artist. Artists do one thing really, really dramatically well. And it might be a very simple thing. They're distinctive in one way. And you can be that too. I'm not saying don't learn, don't reach out, but separate the two. When you want to practice and fall flat on your face, go learn a jazz lick and then try and incorporate it in whatever genre you love. But separate the two. When you're working in the genre you love, be a player, you know, be, be that guy. And it can be very, very simple. I never learned classical music. I never learned jazz. I never learned bluegrass. I am okay not knowing those idioms. Those are some of the most demanding and musically challenging idioms there are. So basically what I do is pretty simple. It's rock, blues, pop, R&B, and a little bit of country. The music I love the most is the simplest music. And you might be that way too. Always stand up for it and champion it. And if you want to be in a 50s band, if you want to be in uh, you know, the Stray Cats, put together a band like that, make music like that. If you want to be in a Chris Isaac kind of band, put together a band like that. If you want to be in a Beatles type band, do it like that. Heavy rock, do it like that. Find the thing you love the most and be become kind of an aficionado and a performer in that genre so that you can actually excel at one thing. And then when nobody's looking in our private moments, we can reach out and try and experiment and fall flat on our face, learning new stuff. And then you can bring that little jazz lick into your heavy metal genre if you want. All these little things, these little bites you take from different styles of music and other guitar players, you can bring them in to your favorite kind of music. To me,
me, the most inspiring thing you can do is go back and learn something that you loved, something that you're curious about, maybe from a month ago, a year ago, many years ago. This song I keep forgetting by Michael McDonald is from a long time ago. It's kind of from my youth. And Steve Lukather, he sat down on the session, created a rhythm part in front of the chord changes that was spontaneous, and it's really pretty magical. Um, a great tracking date. But, you know, I love Leonard Skinner. I love classic rock. It really could be anything. It could be Humble Pie. It could be the Foo Fighters. Anything you're curious about, uh, maybe you learned it before and you're relearning it. Maybe you're learning it for the first time. But put it up and just keep cycling through it until you get the part. And if you're having trouble with it, go to YouTube and check out Andy from Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. He'll teach it to you, and then you can play along with the record. The important thing, do whatever you need to do to make it easy for yourself to get in, to find a way in, and then play along with the record. It's so inspiring to play with the record. You can do the exact part. You can deviate from the part and do your own fills and make it your own. And then think about this. Then someday you can take it out and play it in a band and actualize it out there. But the, the really the inspiring thing, it never fails. If I'm feeling uninspired, if I put a great song in front of me and learn either, even a small part of the guitar part, it makes me happy. Let's dive in. You can grab the riff afterwards, but play it in time. I think it's a good way to memorize. Part. It works great for this. Let everybody else go kind of crazy. Steve lays it down, settles it down. I love how he vibratos only the E minor right here. And this simple reggae part. Let everybody else travel through the chords and he anchors it. It's really cool. One thing about his part also is that he's playing small pieces of chords, so it leaves a lot of space for the bass, drums, and keyboards and the vocal. Really, really kind of brilliant and very spontaneous. It's inspiring. And you can learn, you don't have to grab everything, and you can grab bits after they happen. If you play it in time, two beats later, you're still in the pocket. You can, can, can kind of memorize stuff easily that way. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos. There's a 14 day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.